Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash, Supergirl, The Arrowverse as a whole. We've got an interesting video for you guys, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so it's been a bit of a slow week. The Flash wasn't on. It was only Superman and Lois on this week. Obviously, we made that video. We did our normal Thursday live stream. I was joined by Eric, and also, please be sure, remember, this Thursday, another live stream is happening, as we do every single week, 9pm UK time, so translate that to wherever you guys are if you want to join us live, and support the videos, because it really is appreciated when you guys come and talk to us live. But yeah, so it's been a slow week, and... I, like a month ago, reached out to some of you guys, and you guys sent in some questions and theories about some upcoming things to do with The Flash and Supergirl mainly, and so we're going to be reading out some of your Q&A questions, and we're going to be breaking them down and talking about each individual statement, so hopefully you enjoyed this, I haven't done one of these videos since like, maybe like five months ago or something, before the shows came back easily. Okay, so first question comes from Fiction Master 101 on YouTube who asks, Will Supergirl be referenced in Superman Lois? Can Kara get to see her nephews? So this is a big thing that people have been complaining about recently. So Superman Lois is a beloved show. Everyone loves it right now. I've barely seen anyone that doesn't love it. I love it. Okay, but it must be said they are pretty much ignoring a lot of what happened in the rest of the Arrowverse, although this week they did do a direct link to the multiverse and Crisis where you literally saw the antimatter wave. So it seems like they are warming up to the idea of crossing over, and I think we're going to have to wait till season 2 to get any type of proper crossover, and they're going to become more involved in the Arrowverse. I think season 1 is just kind of isolated, just their own show, they're just trying to make a good one season show and then they can expand from season two onwards. But in regards to Supergirl meeting her nephews, I don't think it's going to happen. And why don't I think it's going to happen? Well, it's because Melissa is leaving and she's not going to be in Vancouver. She's going to be probably living back in LA. Definitely by the time of Superman and Lois starting to shoot again for season two because I doubt there's still going to be a possibility for her to cross over while she's still in Vancouver until August because all the storylines have been set. However, it's probably a little bit easier to get Tyler to come over to Supergirl. Maybe, possibly, but I don't think this is going to happen and I'm sorry to say it, but I would like to see Supergirl and Superman on the screen together one more time but I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. This comes from Anthony on YouTube who asks, With Kara finding her father in the Phantom Zone, what do you think are the chances she moves to Argo City with her mother and father to make up for lost time? So I think this is a really good idea, and that's why I'm bringing it up, because it sounds better than Kara, say, sacrificing herself or dying for the planet. This could be a very viable option, because the question of what is going to happen to Zor-El is very relevant right now. Because when Supergirl leaves the show and she's probably going to go away, is he just going to stay in National City and try and blend in with the humans? Or is he going to go and meet his wife who is alive on Argo City? So could Kara go with them? Well, I think that is definitely a possibility that she might move to Argo by the end of the season. Although I still am sticking to the idea that she's going to probably go to the future and join the Legion of Superheroes. However, I think yours might be like the second best theory we have right now. Let's move on to Ashley's question on YouTube and she says, Do you think there will be a final crossover between The Flash and Supergirl? So I just briefly touched on Superman and Supergirl crossing over. I don't think it's very likely. However, I think with The Flash already confirmed to be doing a sort of crossover event at the start of their next season. They're going to have five episodes right at the start, and in each individual episode, you're going to be seeing different characters pop up on the show. So if there is a way that they work out Melissa's schedule as she finishes in August for Supergirl Forever, I think there may be a possibility that we have one final crossover episode in The Flash with Supergirl showing up and probably not the rest of the Supergirl cast. So that is one theory right now. I don't know how likely it is. I think it's more likely that those five episodes are going to be 
to do with characters on the other shows rather than Supergirl, but I'm holding out hope that maybe they sort out the schedules. At the end of August, they're allowed to do like one episode together. Let's move on. Marcus on YouTube asks, is there going to be a spin-off about Midvale with young Kara and Alex? So, as you guys know, right now, Midvale is a big thing. The last two two-part episodes were a great success. Loads of people loved them, and it even got people talking about a potential Midvale spin-off. Also, the showrunners acknowledged this. They said that they would really like to do this, and they would be really in for it because they love young Kara and young Alex, played by Isabella Vidovic and Olivia Nakanen. So I think we're all expecting maybe one Supergirl spin-off, because technically Superman Lois is a Supergirl spin-off, but it's established itself as a kind of standalone show, but I think there is probably going to be some pitching process where there will be a couple of Supergirl shows up for the taking. And I think a Legion show would be fantastic, that would be my number one pick. Obviously a Dreamer show could be a cool thing, and I think Midvale is like the next coolest thing. So those are some options, I think Midvale is the most likely one out of all of those, because it would be a kind of Smallville type episode structure that they could go down, and I think it would really work like as a whole, because the CW has done a lot of high school stuff, so it's in their ballpark. But let's move on to the next thing, so Daja asks, if Kara does die, how do you think that will happen, given the fact that the character only died once in the comics, and that was during Crisis? So obviously she didn't die during Crisis. In the TV show, Oliver sacrificed himself in order to save Barry and Kara, and so if she does in fact die, and that's the way they want to end Supergirl, which is very, very unlikely because Melissa and the showrunners have said they don't want to do anything like that. They don't want to do anything as dark. And Melissa has apparently put in a special request about how her character leaves. But if they were going to kill off Kara, I think they would do it in a heroic way that she is sacrificing herself maybe for her friends and her family because that's what she cares about so much. So I think that's the only possibility if that ever does happen, but I really don't think it's going to happen at the end of Supergirl season 6, aka the final season. But anyway, let's move on to the next one. This question is from Flashverse, and Flashverse asks, with the announcement that Tom Kavanagh and Carlos Valdez are leaving at the end of the Flash season 7, do you think we will see Bart Allen and Nora West Allen replace them as series regulars? So this is a very good question. And recently, we got some reports and some rumors from very credible sources saying that Bart Allen would show up again next season, and so would Jay Garrick. However, in regards to them being a series regular, it's not very likely that Bart Allen is going to be a series regular, although I definitely think he's going to show up. And that is because in September, the actor who plays Bart Allen is in fact going to be going to Broadway, and he's going to be playing Jamie, and everybody's talking about Jamie, on Broadway, and so that means he's going to be living in New York, he's going to be there, performing every single day of the week, obviously excluding his breaks, but that's not going to be long enough for him to go up to Vancouver, so he's going to be extremely busy, and he's not going to be a series regular on the show, at least for the first part of the season. Now, I'm not saying that in the back half, Bart couldn't be a series regular, that being Jordan Fisher, of course. However, it's unlikely, because we don't know how long he's going to be in this lead Broadway role. However, it's possible that he does come back, like, on a recurring basis, but it's very unlikely that he's going to be sticking around for the whole season. And now, in regards to Nora, I don't think she is going to be showing up much. I think she's going to be maybe showing up for like one guest spot, max. Because, you know, this season she is showing up for the penultimate episode and the finale, which was mainly because of the 150th episode. I think that was the big drawback for Jessica Parker Kennedy. That's why she came back, because it is this kind of landmark episode. She would be in it. You would have her having this new kind of brother, and it was very important for the Flash showrunners to have both of them in, and so somehow they were able to persuade her to come back, but she's pretty busy, and I don't think she's going to be taking back on that series regular role. However, instead of Tom Kavanagh and Carlos Valdez's character, that being Wells, or like any version of Wells, and Cisco, instead of Cisco, we got Chester, he's going to be obviously the series regular, 
and it seems like maybe Allegra is going to be taking up more of the kind of role that Nash used to be. Although she is nothing like any of the other Wellses, she isn't that smart, she doesn't have the same kind of vibe around her. So I wouldn't technically call that a replacement, although they are going to be linking the two characters together. I don't think we're going to get an actual replacement for Wells, but I do think Chester is going to be Cisco's replacement. So that's about it for today's video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. If you want to be featured in another video like this, please be sure to go over to the community tab right now. I'm going to post another one just like this so we can get a couple of new videos like this sometime next week or the week after. But for now, click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see room.